Hello, my sweet, shabby, loving friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new, my name is Becky, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. Each week, I share kinda shabby, but always chic, crafty inspirations. Now this week, I have several fall-themed items that we're going to be creating, and I'm also going to be upcycling a few things as well. First off, I have this beautiful, tiered tray that Mr. Shabby put together for me using some scrap wood that he cut into three rounders for the tray itself and then between each of the sections of the tray he used these old spindles that came from a footstool that I'd purchased at Goodwill. So we are going to be painting and also decorating our tiered tray for fall. Our next upcycled item that we're going to be using, I'm almost ashamed to even tell you what these are. <laughs> these are actually handles from toilet brushes. Yes, girls, you heard me right. So we are going to be using these as pumpkin stems to make some shabby chic pumpkins. We have some pink and aqua flannel that I purchased at Walmart already pre-cut in one and a half yard sections. So those are gonna make really, really cute shabby chic pumpkins. Next up, I think you girls want to run to your closest Walmart to pick up this gorgeous group of scrapbooking papers here. It has the florals, it has laces, it has, I mean, just so many beautiful double-sided papers that are going to just come in handy with so many of your shabby chic crafts. I'm also going to post a link to Amazon if you do not have these available in Walmart. So we're going to be using some of these gorgeous scrapbooking papers to create a shabby chic fall banner using some chipboard pieces that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna be recovering some toilet tissue boxes. No matter what pattern is in the box, none of them match my taste. So I'm going to be using some shabby chic papers to gussy up some plain old tissue boxes to make them more my style. So we've got a lot to do today, so I'm gonna clean this up and we're gonna get these projects started. Now for the edges of our tiered tray here, I had intended to take these stick-on gemstones, stick them all around the edges here and paint over that, kind of like a beaded trim detail, but these things were not as large as I remembered them to be, so that's not gonna work. I'm gonna be headed off to Hobby Lobby to buy some half round wood beads to finish this look off, but in the meantime, we're just gonna go ahead and get some paint on this. So I am using the Waverly paint in the color plaster, and we are going to just go ahead and get our base coat on, and then we'll come back and add our beads and the trim, and I'm also gonna be adding some beads to the base of this, just to lift it up off the ground a little bit, because I really don't like this just lying flat on on the table. So I prefer to start at the edges, then I can come back and paint over the top because there's usually a little ridge of paint that's left there. So if you start on your edges first, then you can come back and paint right over that edge and smooth everything out. That makes it so much easier to paint these. We are now going to start making some pumpkins. And for this particular pumpkin, we aren't gonna be using our sewing machine. We're going to be doing a running stitch and we're gonna need some circles. Now this is a 20 inch diameter circle and I want my pumpkins to be several different sizes. So this next one here, I think I'm going to make it a little smaller. A quick and easy way to do this is I take my fabric and it is folded in half and I have the fold at the bottom. Then I take my fold and I fold that up to however large I want this pumpkin to be. 
me do eight inches. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark eight inches right here. Take this around like an arc. Mark eight inches on either side of my measuring tape. Still continue it in the form of an arc. Marking eight inches on either side of my measuring tape and pull that on down to the end and mark eight inches again. I'm just going to follow that along in an arc. And when I open it up, I have a nice circle. And I'm going to do the same thing with my pink fabric as well. So once I get those all cut out, then we'll start doing our running stitch to complete our pump. I'm going to show you how to achieve this look using this little one right here. You definitely want to make sure that you've got a nice long needle, some nice heavyweight thread, a very, very long piece of string to go all the way around your pumpkin. We're going to come up because we're going to make a loop to put our thread, our needle back through there. That way it is going to secure this edge so when we make our gathers it is not going to pull through our fabric and for your running stitch it is just as simple as taking your needle and going down and up down and up and you're going to do that same process all the way around your little pumpkin pull your thread through and once we do that we will gather and fill our pumpkin so you're just going to pull and gather all the way around your circle. This is going to give us a cute little pouch here. And I'm going to take some beans to weight down the bottom. A handful of that is good. Now I'm going to take some fiber fill and you're just going to continue to stuff your pumpkin. So I'm going to take four pieces, pull this tightly again, put that where I want it to make extra fluffy lobes on the pumpkin. And I'm going to put another one right over here, and then one here and one here. So now when I pull that closed again, we've got these nice little lobes on our pumpkin. So we're going to come back through and pick up a couple of the pleats here and loop it through, and we're going to tie this off. Don't cut your string just yet. If you want to leave your pumpkin like this, that is fine. If you put your little stem in there, that's going to be adorable. But what I like to do is give it more of a tufted appearance by putting in a button at the bottom. And we're just going to go down through the center. Find that hole there and pull this up. So then I'm going to Put it on the other side of the button, bring it back up through the middle, pull that tightly. And you can see when we do that, it gives that, that nice, cute little tufted appearance. So I went through the button twice, still holding that tightly. Pick up with your needle a couple of those pleats and then tie off. I am going to tie this off one more time just to make sure that it's not going anywhere. And now I'm going to clip my thread and put my toilet brush handle in there. I'm gonna take my hot glue gun, pull that back out, put some glue on the bottom here, put glue around the inside, and there we go. How cute and simple and quick was that? I'm just going to play around with what I have here, and then once I decide what I'm gonna put on the pumpkins, we'll go ahead and decorate them together. So for my little pink pumpkin, I have decided that I want to put this lace collar around here. And I just took a piece of lace and did a running stitch to gather all of that here so that would fit around my pumpkin. I like these little flowers. I'm gonna put these flowers on there too. I'm going to do a tassel with these beads and I think that that is just going to look so pretty on our little pink pumpkin. And I'm just putting a tiny little bit of glue. I'm just tacking it down in various places just to keep that where I want it. 
and I'm just making some loops with my pearls here. Come up here at the top and I'm going to use a piece of lace to tie these off. Then cut these here. And I think that looks really pretty right there. And there we go. That's what we have with our first pumpkin. How cute is that? Now for our little aqua pumpkin here, I've made another little lace collar. I have a tassel that I made from lace and pom-poms. I like these little flowers here too. And some feathers. How cute is that going to be? And there we go. I think those feathers are adorable. I love that. How cute. All right, gals, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial on these cute little pumpkins. So, I hope you'll make a few of those for yourself. Now, I got my beads and I have started on this section right here. You can see I have three of those glued down already. I'm going to be using my quick grip and we'll be applying the rest of those beads to all three sections here. Then we'll come back and do a paint and wax detail on that beaded trim that's going to be just scrumptious. Okay, friends, I have applied all of the beads and it actually took longer to glue those things on than I thought it would. Then I have done a distressing technique on the top and the bottom tier. This is very flat and one dimensional. And when we add a little bit of paint and some wax, we really can bring out some of those details to just give it a little more interest. So let me adjust the camera angle and bring you in closer so you can see how to achieve a beautiful aged look with some paint and some wax. Now from this angle, it's easier to see the distressing that I have on the top and the bottom tier. Now I'm going to show you how to achieve that look on the second tier of our tray. I will be using the Waverly chalk paint in the color Mineral. I'm just going for the dry brushing here. Just sporadically applying some paint. Now I am doing a more opaque coverage of the beads with that paint but I'm not going to let that all dry. I'm going to take a baby wipe and come back and I'm going to wipe some of that paint off on my spindle. Now I'm going to go back along the beaded edges here and I am going to wipe away a lot of the paint from that top edge so the other paint is left in between the recesses there. Now I'm going to come back and I am going to dry brush on the second shelf just so we can add a little bit of interest to this piece. So now we're going to come back with our sandpaper. Normally I'm not one for sanding in the house, but it is so hot outside. I was not going out in the garage to do this. And I'm sanding in a circular motion because that's also going to be how I'm going to apply my wax. Now I'm going to go get my vacuum cleaner and I'm going to vacuum all this up. And now that I have that all sanded off, you can see all that distressing and how great that looks. But to bring this out even more, we're going to be applying white wax. Now this wax that I have here is the Craft Smart that I pick up from Michaels. It's very creamy looking. If you want a truly white white wax, then I suggest the Annie Sloan. But you can see there is a huge difference work the wax into the lid and I'm just going to start applying all around and I'm getting all into those details as best I can with that brush. Now I'm going to do the same thing and in a circular motion just apply my wax all over that middle tier. And now we're going to come back in with either a lint-free rag or a paper towel and we are going to wipe off that excess.
I'm going to grab the spindle and just wipe that back really well. To really polish all of this up, I use just a regular old shoe shine brush that really helps to even out all of that wax and buff it and give it just a nice shine. When I get this staged up and get you some close-up shots, you'll be able to see all of this glorious aged detail. For my banner, I'm gonna put it in my dining room on my buffet. And these are the plates that I have in my dining room for fall. And it has just that gorgeous greenish gray and some taupes in there. And so I decided I wanted to do a banner that was going to match with my dinnerware. I have covered these right here that just so beautifully match with that little pumpkin there. I want this paper here to be on the two ends and this to say fall because we are going to stamp that in just a second. So what I have done is laid out my chipboard on the back of the paper, traced it, made sure to trace the circles as well. So we're going to cut these out punch our holes. I just like to cover up the cardboard side. We're going to be using the Elmer's Craft Bond glue and this is an extra strength glue stick and I just make sure that I've got glue all on those corners really well and then I just go over the entire piece coating it with that glue. Line it up, Bondo spreader, to smooth it down. And it's just that easy. Now because we have used our glue stick and not our Mod Podge, we can go right back in over the top of this with our ink. And because the A is the widest at the bottom, I place that one first. I like to use my quilting squares here, and I'm going to go ahead and push that down and when I turn it over I have my letter all ready for me to ink up. I'm going to take a baby wipe to remove the excess ink from around the outside and I'm going to hover over, lay this down, hold with one hand while you walk your fingers over, let that ink soak into that paper and lift straight up. Oh. There we go. We've got those beautiful distressed letters. I know that if I want it to be even with the A, the bottom of that F needs to be at four and three quarters. Ink this up, remove the excess, hover over and line up, and press. Mm -mm. Beautiful. And that looks so good. And those colors coordinate so well with that. Now I'll be using my quick grip to add buttons to the bottom and this pretty lace at the top just to fancy that up a little bit. And that's going to look really, really cute and oh so shabby chic. So I'm just going to keep cutting off my lace to fit the tops of each of my pennant shapes here and then we'll come back and we'll put in our hanger. And for the hanger here I have cut 72 inch long piece of this thicker jute that I pick up from Hobby Lobby and I've almost got it all threaded through. I take a piece of tape and put it at the end that way it makes it easier to thread it through and I go down, bring it back behind, pull that through, and then bring it up. Same thing with the last one here. Down, thread it behind, and bring it up. And then once I get ready to hang it on my buffet, I'll adjust how close the letters are to each other. 
That's going to look really pretty in my dining room. So for my shabby tassel, I have taken green and white striped seersucker and just plain white cotton muslin fabric. And I have snipped and ripped them into 16 inch long pieces because I want an 8 inch tassel. And all I did was stack up the pieces, alternating colors, and I have four of the seersucker and four of the cotton muslin. And when you do cut your strips and you snip and rip those strips, it does give you that awesome shabby edge that I just love so much. But you also have a whole lot of string, so make sure you remove your string when you snip and rip, pull all those strings off. And now to assemble, all I'm going to do, since I already have them stacked alternating colors, is pull up in the middle, take an extra piece, pull it through, and tie it up. And that is all there is to it. I will be tying these tassels at the end of my little banner here once I decide where that is going to lie on my buffet. And I can't wait to get this staged up for you to show you how it's going to look on my buffet. So we're going to be covering this geometric box with some of this beautiful paper. I think we had wallpaper that looked like that in the 70s. I took and measured the top and cut a piece with my Cricut trimmer. I folded it to make sure I knew where the middle was. I made marks for the middle in the shape of an X. Then I took my craft knife and cut the slits in there so when we put it on top, we're going to be able to fold that back and pull our tissue up through that area there. So the first thing I want to do is put some paper on here. And I did cut it just a little shorter because this is actually going to come over the top. And then we're going to put some lace there so we're not even going to see that seam. I want to make sure I'm going to have nice crisp folds. And now I'm going to take it off of there and literally fold it. I'm not gluing anything down just yet. Then I'm going to come over and do the same thing right here. And fold that. So now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and use our Elmer's glue. And we're going to glue that to our box. Super duper quick and easy and really updates the look of these things. Use the Mondo spreader. And now before we tape this down, so I'm going to match that pattern right there, right here with this one. Now we can put the top on. So I'm going to take these and fold these in just like that. That's adorable. And I'm going to crease it. Clip into the corner. So I've clipped the corner there so that will lie flat just like that and then I'll glue it to this side here. So I'm going to just roll this back, just applying a generous amount of glue, smoothing this all down, and then I'm going to apply the glue to the edges of the paper here. And I'll just need to do all the other sides. So there's our pretty little box. Now I'm just going to take this lace and glue it all around the edges here. And because I'm gluing to paper, I am going to use some hot glue for this. I don't even think this is shabby chic. I think this is granny chic. And it's adorable. Trim the back of those so they'll lie flat. So I'm going to glue those on right there and we are going to be done. Now the last thing I need to do is get everything cleaned up, staged up, and show you how cute all of our projects turned out today.
always, I am so honored that you chose to spend a bit of your time here with me today. I truly appreciate you. I hope that you found lots of inspiration to reuse some spindles and also to make good use of some toilet brush handles. I hope you'll give these shabby chic pumpkins a try. Come back next week for more kinda shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until then my sweet friends, be blessed.